Hey Android fans, this is Eric from HollywoodFrodo.com. Welcome to the Android Car Tablet Series. And this is step number one. Because if you want to turn an Android tablet into the ultimate car infotainment system, the first thing you have to decide, the first thing you have to do is buy a tablet and decide which tablet to buy. Um, this is the tablet that I have, that I'm using right now as my car infotainment system. It's the uh, Asus Memo Pad 176. Um, it's just one of many options. But let's talk about what's important when you want to use a tablet as a car, uh, Android Auto car infotainment type system. Uh, the number one thing you probably want to think about is size. Probably seven to eight inches is ideal. Now, if you want to go crazy and you want to get a, a tablet that's bigger than that, of course you can, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you do, it's going to look really kind of stupid in your car because it's just too big. Um, this is a 7-inch tablet. It is plenty big enough. I would consider maybe going to an 8-inch tablet, but that would be the absolute top size that I would use. Anything bigger than that, it would just be too big, too clunky. It starts to uh, defeat the purpose. Um, because you want something that you can basically permanently leave in your car all the time and you want it to look like it's part of your car not like it's some strange odd thing that doesn't belong there so to me seven eight inches is really nice it's the same size or even bigger than a lot of the sort of infotainment screens that are built into cars uh, these days um, plenty big enough to be able to uh, tap uh, an app or something or you know use it while you're driving or you know while you're parked or while you're at a red light without uh, having a fumble or, or accidentally hitting the wrong thing like you might do on your phone um, seven inches is plenty big enough seven to eight inches max that to me is the ideal size for the tablet the other thing that i would recommend you want to make sure you get a tablet that has at least uh, android kitkat 4.4 and why is that? That's because one of the best features of KitKat is OK Google. Uh, you can set it so that you can say OK Google regardless of where you are on your tablet, regardless of what app you're using, and it'll bring up the Google Now voice assistant slash voice search. And that's awesome because if it's, an, if it's a car tablet, if you're going to be using it while you're driving, the ideal situation is to not have to touch anything, to be able to use it completely and totally by voice. Um, now, voice assistants are not at the level where that's going to be 100% possible, but OK Google allows you to do it for a lot of things. You can launch apps, um, you can uh, uh, create memos for yourself, you can play music, uh, play a specific album or artist, all by voice. Uh, and with some plugins that we're going to talk about later on in this series, you can do even way more than that. Um, even using your car tablet for texting and initiating phone calls and things like that. So, uh, but in order to do it all without having to do, touch your tablet at all, you need to be able to initiate OK Google or Google Now using OK Google from anywhere you are. So you want to have Android 4.4 and above. So that's definitely something you need to look for in a car tablet. The next thing you want to look for is a minimum of one gigabyte of RAM. Um, and that's a minimum. Uh, this tablet that I got has one gig of RAM. This is a low-end tablet. It only costs about a hundred bucks. So uh, if you're like me, maybe you think you want a car tablet infotainment, but you don't want to put a lot of money into it up front because you're not sure how much you will or won't use it. Um, which is how I was starting out, so I decided I'd start with an inexpensive tablet, and this is a, about a $100 tablet. It does have the one gig of RAM. Uh, now, if I, having used this for two or three months and just seeing how convenient it is, if I were to go buy one today, I'd probably go a little bit higher and put like around 200-ish bucks or so in it and get a little bit faster processor and higher RAM. Uh, if you can, if you have the money, look for two gigs of RAM or at least 1.5 gigs of RAM. But one will suffice. The reason you want more RAM, the more RAM you have, you can have things operating at the same time, so you can have your maps running, but you can still have, you know, OK Google running in the background, you can have your music app running without having to worry about it. Now, theoretically, one gig of RAM is enough to do all that, but if you have a little extra horsepower, it doesn't hurt. So just depending on where your budget is. 
But if you're like me and you're just starting this out or you don't have a lot of money to put into it, you can get this tablet for about 100 bucks. And as you will see, it does do the trick. So that's the number two thing. Uh, the number three thing is, of course, you want as fast of a processor as what money can buy. There's no such thing as a too fast of a processor. So just whatever's within your budget. Uh, the processor on this is like 1.3 gigahertz. Um, by That's how it normally runs. I think it can go up to 1.5, but generally it's, it's a 1.3. If you go up to the $200 range, two to, especially 2 to 300, then you can probably get one that has about a 2.5, 2.7 gigahertz processor, would be even better. Um, the next thing you want is you want to make sure you have good viewing angles. Uh, because this is going to be in your car, of course you can position it so that it's facing more or less towards you, the driver. But even better, if your passenger can also see it without any problem. Uh, so make sure you get a tablet that has a really good uh, viewing angle on it. I would say you want a good high definition screen, but that's really a, a moot point these days because pretty much, you know, as long as you're buying a, a decent uh, name brand tablet, it's going to have the high density, it's going to have a decent display. Um, again, this is an expensive tablet, but Asus makes good tablets and it has an excellent display. Um, works great, looks great. Uh, if you go up to a more expensive, say, Samsung Galaxy, and the higher end, Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 is probably a good one right now. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro has good specs, but it's too big. It's like 8.4 inches, and that adds literally 2 extra inches in the, in the width, the height, and it's just too big to me. But, uh, but it has good specs. So, um, you know, but of course, new tablets are coming out every month. So at the time you're watching this, there'll probably be some new tablets out. Uh, so you want to get the fastest processor uh, that you can with good viewing angles. Also, make sure it has a good battery. Um, you're, you know, if you're like me, you're going to have this permanently attached to a power source in your car. So anytime you're driving somewhere and your car is uh, turned on, it's going to be charging it. Uh, but when you turn off your car, you don't want to have to power down the tablet. You want to be able to leave the tablet on so that when you crank your car back up, it just is right there and ready for you. Um, this tablet has excellent battery life for me. Uh, I can not be in my car for 24 hours and get in and crank it up and it's, you know, the battery change is like 5% at the most. Um, and that's because I don't have a lot of stuff on it. I only put stuff on it that's specific to be used in the car, so I don't have a ton of stuff running. When I'm not using it, it's pretty much idle. So it's not doing anything, so it doesn't use power. Um, and when it's on and the display is on, and obviously the display is one of the things that uses the most battery, it's getting a charge. So therefore it stays charged. But uh, you want to make sure it has a good battery, that the battery doesn't go dead on you when it's just sitting there idle overnight. Um, the next thing you might want to look at is if it has a light sensor. Because you might want to put the display on auto so that in the day it's brighter and at night it's dimmer. Um, this particular tablet does not have a light sensor. Um, but I have created uh, several things so that it knows when sunset and sunrise is and adjusts the display accordingly. I also can change the display level by voice command. Um, or I can change the display level by simply tapping the screen. Those are things I've built into it that I'll show later on in this series. Uh, but if you buy one with a light sensor on it and put it on auto, you might not even have to worry about that. So that might be something to consider. Um, another thing you might want to think about is the camera uh, quality. Uh, not a big issue for me. I don't foresee myself using the camera really for anything. Uh, but there are some apps where you can have the camera running to see recording where you're going. Some people like to do that kind of stuff. Um, if that is something you're going to be interested in doing, then you might want to consider the camera quality uh, uh, for that. Um, so that, those are the main things you want to think about in order to get uh, uh, the, a good tablet to use as a car infotainment system. Again, 7 to 8 inches. Uh, size is probably one of the most important things. Android KitKat 4.4 or, or above. Don't get anything under 4.4 because you want to be able to use those voice commands from anywhere. Um, and a minimum of 1 gigabyte of RAM. More if you can afford it and find it in a good quality uh, tablet and as good of a processor as you can get, um, as well as great viewing angles and a good battery. Um, those are the most important things. So find a tablet that fits that bill 
and then uh, come back and we'll start talking about what you need to do to turn that tablet into the perfect car infotainment system. Mm -hmm.